He's a professor who taught a lesson about basic, unremarkable anatomy and physiology, and his college fired him. Stuart Shepard, and this is First Liberty Live. Thank you for being part of this project, and thank you for sharing it with your friends and family. You're going to find this topic today, I think, particularly interesting. I've got two people to introduce to you. Keisha Russell is one of our attorneys here at First Liberty Institute, and Johnson Varkey taught anatomy and physiology at a college here in Texas and similar courses for 20 years. Right. Hi, Keisha. Hi, Johnson. Hi, Stuart. G good to see both of you. St. Philip's College is on the east side of San Antonio. The, the name was suggested might be religious, but it's not. It's just a 125-year-old community college there. You taught there for 20 of those years. What does the school mean to you? Why were you there? Yeah, I was uh, a research scientist, but my passion was to teach all the time because I've been involved in ministry and I was involved in uh, teaching. So my passion was to teach at uh, St. Philip's College, being a well-reputed school, I always wanted to get uh, in there and teach. So 20 years ago, I got that teaching position and uh, I've been teaching there for the last 20 years. And that's part of what you do there. You also are a, an associate pastor at the church that you're with there in San Antonio. Yes, I am an associate pastor at uh, the International Bible Church. We're in San Antonio. And to be clear, you keep those two roles separate, right? You of don't course. bring the preaching into the classroom. No, I yeah. sure don't. Yeah, I'm sure we can talk about anatomy and physiology in church if you want to, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't bring uh, my preaching into my classroom when I teach about human anatomy and physiology. It's, I just teach basic biology. That's Let, all I teach. Let's talk about one particular day when you're in the middle of your lecture and you, you kind of notice that four students have gotten up and walked out of your classroom. What were you teaching that day that appeared to trigger them, to cause them to exit the room? That day I was teaching the chapter on um, human reproductive system. So uh, in, when I teach human reproductive system, you know, I emphasize on the fact that male and female uh, or the maleness or the femaleness are controlled by two genes. See, in our, all of our cells, we have 23 pairs of genes and, uh, sorry, chromosomes, chromosomes. Mm -hmm. So the 23rd pair is that determines the sex of a person. So if that 23rd pair of chromosomes are X and X, it is a female, and if it's X and Y, it's a male. And uh, I mentioned in the class that that's what makes male and female not our thinking. Then second thing I would mention is, you know, to perpetuate human species, to continue our species, not just human species, any species, the sex has to be between male and female not between two men or two women. To continue the species, that's how the body is designed. So it, the sex has to be between male and female. And the third thing that I would mention is, see, when the sperm, which has 23 chromosomes, and the egg, which has 23 chromosomes, when they join together, we have 46 chromosomes. That's at that 23, 23 pairs, right. 46 chromosomes. So that cell, which is the first cell, when we, when may, uh, the sperm and egg joins, that's the zygote, which, ha which has 46 chromosomes. That cell begins to divide. And if we allow that to divide and continue in 38 weeks, we have a beautiful baby. And in that whole process, after the formation of the zygote, we are not adding any information into that, and we are not deleting any information from that cell. It's a complete it's, person. That's a complete. So that's why I mentioned to them that that zygote is the beginning of life, not at birth. When I mentioned all these, those four, four students, they just walked out. Did you quote scripture? No. 
did you get behind a pulpit and preach for a little bit? <laughs> no, I never. <laughs> and I've known I've known you only for a short time, but I, I think I read you pretty well. You wouldn't do that. No, I That's, don't. It's I not don't. what I you didn't. do in the classroom, right? I didn't do that. And I also know that those of us who were, and, and I mostly paid attention in high school, but everything you just said, I learned when I was in high school. Yeah. Stated pretty much just the way you just did, and also then repeated it when I got to college. There's nothing new here. There's nothing remarkable here. And frankly, I've been around the issues long enough. It, the gender studies people really, I don't think, would argue with you either because they say their field of study is separate from what you just talked about, right? Yeah, the gender study, you know, I, I would uh, say, you know, this state the fact that X and X, those two chromosomes make a person female and XY male. That's all I mentioned in the classroom. And uh, yeah. that's just mere biology, bi biological fact. So what is First Liberty doing, Keisha? How are we stepping in? Oh, I've, I need to mention the fact the school then fired you. Uh, and Keisha, I'll get to you in just a second. I want to read a little excerpt from the, the letter that they sent you. And, and we just heard what the lesson was about, but they wrote you a letter and they said there were several reports of, and I'm, uh, this is in quotes now, religious preaching, yeah. discriminatory, discriminatory comments about homosexuals and transgender individuals, anti-abortion rhetoric, and misogynistic banter. Did that happen in your classroom? No. Did the letter include any examples? No. Uh, the thing is, what they said is that uh, my teaching was offensive and uh, unacceptable that's only two words that they use and they never said or he never said what is my religious preaching which i never did and uh, what is the comment that i made against any people you know i never made i never did any of those things in my classroom and it's worth mentioning you'd been there 20 years yes, this I is did. and you've taught these lessons Same. over and over and over again and this is the first time that this reaction that happened. is correct Keisha, you're looking at this as an attorney. What do you see? Uh, huge problems for the college. Um, <laughs> you know, when I look at that, I see a couple of issues. One is that it's pretty clear that he's teaching science uh, and biology according to his long experience and his, his, his very impressive academic record. And the other thing is it's very clear he wasn't doing any religious preaching. But even if he were, those things, meaning if he was if someone interpreted the idea that life begins at conception to be a religious statement he's still allowed to make that statement during his class because he's still backing it up with biological facts um and it's in his position it's fact so according to academic freedom according to the first amendment he would still be allowed to say those things even if it were considered to be a religious statement but in his view it isn't a religious and, and statement. it's not anti-abortion to say life begins at conception no it, that's it, not taking a political position against a procedure no he's just saying what the curriculum what his experience what his education says is true um and that is something that he must do and even further the college didn't follow its own process because even if they did receive comments and 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 complaints according to their process he's supposed to receive those comments and those complaints and have an opportunity to respond and neither did he neither was he able to see the complaint nor was he able to respond to anything he was just immediately fired and so they're they're a, a lot of issues here um, and a lot of bad things the college did to this professor. And she hit on a key point. You never got to face your accusers. You don't know who they are. No, I don't. And you didn't get to go through the process that the school has put in place, right? No, I don't. And Keisha, that puts the school, frankly, in a bad position because they didn't even follow their own rules on this. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, besides the fact that this is a, a unlawful under federal employment law, right? If they're considering his statements to be religious, they can't fire him for that reason anyway. You can't fire someone for being a religious person for, for even saying, you know, these things. And so there's just a lot of issues here. And, you know, we wrote the college a letter and let them know we want you to reinstate him. Otherwise, there will be further issues for you down the road. Help us understand what makes this a first liberty case. How does religious freedom enter into this? Well, the college made it a religious liberty case because they said we're firing you because of your religious speech, because of your religious beliefs. And um, 
Although he did not preach in the classroom, although he did not make religious statements in the classroom, even if anyone interpreted those things to be religious, the college still can't fire him for that anyways. You know, they're they're supposed to engage in discourse in a classroom. We have this free exchange of ideas and this idea of academic freedom, which is very, very powerful in the university setting. And so for all those reasons, you know, the university is wrong in its position and it was wrong in firing Dr. Varkey and it was even more wrong for not even allowing Dr. Varkey for, to respond before they fired him after 20 years of service. And one important part of this also, on top of all that, is I assume you had a syllabus for your class, right, that you hand out, yeah. and that's approved by the college, correct? Yes. So they put their stamp of approval and said, yes, go teach this. Yes. It seems wrong that they come back and say, but not like that. Yeah, the syllabus, the syllabus, textbook, all the notes, everything is provided by the department. So we just follow the syllabus, we follow the textbook, follow the notes that the department gives. So that's all I did. What would you like to see happen? As uh, Krish has said, they want, I want my position back. You know, they need to reinstate me back and, uh, you know, and uh, help me to do what I love to do, which is to teach. All right. Keisha, anything else you'd like to share before I let you go? No, I just want to thank you for having us on, allowing Dr. Varkey to share his story and just to tell anyone else that if they experience anything like that, they need to contact us at firstliberty.org and we'll see how we can help. Very good. Dr. Varkey, Keisha, thank you so much for making thank time you. for us today. Thank you. We're wishing you the best. We'll be you. at your side every step of the way. Thank you. All right. If you like the idea of a legal organization pushing back against this kind of thing, uh, would you consider supporting our work here at First Liberty? This is what we do. It's an important aspect of the work that we do every day. Uh, when people are just living their lives and trouble comes knocking on their door, we're there to stand beside them as they go through the process and to help make things right again. So uh, on FirstLibertyLive.com, just look for the big red Give button up at the top of the page. First Liberty is fighting for what matters most.